call the meeting to order. Would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Comments of public here interest. This portion of the meeting is to allow up to five <coughs> minutes per speaker with 30 total minutes on items of interest or concern and not on items that are on the current agenda. The Planning and Zoning Commission may not discuss these items but may, may respond with factual or policy information. The Planning and Zoning Commission may choose to place the item on a future agenda. The presiding officer may modify these times as deemed necessary. We have speakers on this topic. We do. First, we have Alexander Stein uh, via Zoom. Hello? I can't hear anything. Hello, Mr. Stein. Can you hear us? I can't hear. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Wow, how annoying is this? I can't hear anything. Audio is in the right setting. You guys hear me? I don't even know if you guys can hear me. Well, I mean, I got a lot to say, but I don't know. I guess I'll just, if it's a zoning uh, meeting, uh, this is the vaccination zone. It's me, prime time. It vaccination mind. Vaccination body. It's a vaccination it party. Off. Let's go. Clap. You are number one. Va okay. Vaccinate my box. <laughs> Has he hacked into your system or something? We're good. We're good? We're good. Okay. I think that might have been a first. I was just starting to get into that. You were starting. Sounds like we will. All right. Uh, uh, we next, will move on. Uh, next is Jennifer Bailey. Uh, yeah, yeah. Any relation? I'm assuming, can I come down here? Yes, please come down to the... Uh, the podium gives us your name and address. Hi. Yes, my name is Jennifer Bailey. My address is 9521 Arbor Hill Drive, Dallas, Texas, 75243. Great. And I apologize, I did not prepare a wrap for you this <laughs> evening. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so again, my name is Jennifer Bailey. This is my business partner, Patrick Carmack, and we would like to propose a change in the zoning ordinance, specifically that prohibits tattoo and permanent cosmetic businesses from operating as a primary use in the downtown business district. My partner has been a professional tattoo artist for 26 years and has owned two successful tattoo shops. I have a background in luxury retail and have run many successful high-end retail stores, including Louis Vuitton. We would like to open an upscale tattoo and permanent cosmetic studio at the space at 1428K Avenue. This space has been vacant for several years and has unfortunately fallen into disrepair. My partner and I have substantial funding to transform the space into a high-end boutique-style environment that complements the surrounding businesses, as well as the city's efforts to establish the downtown area as an arts district. Our plans also include restoring many of the historic elements of the interior of the building. Uh, we do realize that there was probably good reason to enact this ordinance when it was established, but as we all know, times have changed significantly, and tattooing and permanent cosmetics have become far more mainstream and acceptable and are also now heavily regulated by the Texas Department of Health. Uh, it's public knowledge that the previous tenants of this at 1428K Avenue did provide tattoo services, but did so as an accessory to a smoke shop that primarily sold drug paraphernalia and was eventually raided for selling drugs. So we would argue that this type of ordinance encourages that type of criminal element by preventing professional legitimate tattoo shops from operating. We would also like to form, inform the commission that we have the full support of many business owners in the area, as well as two prominent landlords. They are all aligned with our plans for this space and feel that our business would be a great addition to the neighborhood, would increase traffic and re revenue in the downtown district, and that this ordinance is outdated and no longer reflects the current culture. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here tonight. <clears throat> Have they communicated with staff before on this issue? I'm not aware of the issue. I don't know if okay. Mr. Hill is aware. We, the applicant did uh, discuss this issue with us and asked how they could accomplish what they wish okay. to do. And so we uh, recommended they come and present this issue to you. 
tonight during the comments of public interest. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Are there any other speakers? No, there are not. Let's move on to consent, please. The consent agenda. The consent agenda will be acted upon in one motion and <coughs> contains items which are routine and typically non-controversial. Items may be removed from this agenda for individual consideration by commissioners, staff, or from the or any citizen. Citizens are limited to two items and discussion time of three minutes each. The presiding officer may modify these times as deemed necessary. We do not have any speakers or registered opinions on items on the agenda. Thank you. Uh, does any commissioner want to pull an item from consent? Okay. I move we uh, accept the consent agenda as presented. Second. Okay, I have a motion by Commissioner Bronski with a second by Commissioner Bratliff to approve the consent agenda. Please vote. <clears throat> that item carries 7-0. Items for individual consideration. Public hearing items. Applicants are limited to 15 minutes of presentation time with a five minute rebuttal if needed. Remaining speakers are limited to 30 total minutes of testimony time with three minutes assigned per speaker. The presiding officer may modify these times as deemed necessary. Administrative consideration items must be approved if they meet city development regulations. Legislative consideration items are more discretionary, except as constrained by legal considerations. Agenda item number one, public hearing, zoning case 2021-029, request for a specific use permit for continuing care facility on four point acres to rescind specific use permit number 322 for arcade on point one acre on one lot located at the northeast corner of Central Parkway and Haggard Street. Zone plan development 41 corridor commercial with specific use permit number 322 for arcade. Applicant is Mafir Plano, LLC. Good evening, I'm Donna Flotta, Senior Planner with the Planning Department. The applicant is requesting to table this item to the February 21st, 2022 Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. It's recommended that the commission approve their request to table to the February 21st, 2022 Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Any questions for staff? Thank you. I'll open the public hearing. Do we have any speakers on this item? We do not, but the um, applicant is available to answer questions from the commission. Okay. Any questions for the applicant on this item? Okay. We'll close the public hearing, find discussion to the commission. Make a motion. Make, I'd like to move that we accept agenda item number one and approve the applicant's request to table a zoning case to February 21, 2022. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Horn with a second by Commissioner Bronski to approve the applicant's request to table till February 21st, 2022. Please vote. And that item carries 7-0. Next item, please. Agenda item number two, public hearing zoning case 2021-030. Request for a specific use permit for trade school on point zero acre located 224 feet east of Coit Road and 325 feet north of Parker Road. Zoned retail. Applicant is M Munir Bata, LLC. Good evening, everyone. Katja Copeland, Senior Planner with the Planning Department. The applicant is requesting to table this zoning request to the March 1st, 2022 Planning and Zoning Commission meeting and staff recommends that the request to uh, table this zoning case to March 1st, 2022 be accepted. And I'd be pleased to answer any questions. Thank you. Any questions? Quick, quick question. Who's re ultimately responsible for putting in the change uh, signs and who keeps them up? The applicant. The applicant is solely responsible for that? Yes. Do they... they Acquire the signs, you don't furnish them? No, we okay. do not. Good, thank you. Great, thank you. I'll open the public hearing. Do we have any speakers on this item? No, we do not. Close the public hearing. Confine discussion to commission. 
So I'll move that uh, we table uh, item two to the March 1st, 2022 uh, P&Z meeting. Okay, I have a motion by Commissioner Bronski with a second by Commissioner Carey to accept the applicant's request to table item two to the March 1st, uh, 2022 Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. Please vote. Not item carry seven zero. Item three. Agenda item number three, public hearing replat. Southside 14th Street Edition, Block A, Lot 1. Three multifamily resident units, restaurant, professional general administrative office, and health fitness center on one lot on .3 acre located on the south side of 14th Street, 125 feet east of K Avenue, Zone Downtown Business Government. Applicant is East Side 14th Street, LLC. Administrative consideration. Good evening, commissioners. I am Parker McDowell, Planner, Planning Department. Staff recommends approval of the item as, submit, as submitted, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Any questions for staff on this item? Thank you. I'll open the public hearing. Do we have any speakers on this item? No, we do not. Thank you. Close the public hearing, confine discussion to the commission. I move we approve as submitted. Second. And second. So I have a motion by Commissioner Ollie with a second by Commissioner Ratliff to approve item three as submitted. Please vote. <clears throat> that item carries 7 0. Item 4. <clears throat> Agenda item number four, public hearing, preliminary replat. Collin Creek SF blocks L A through L and Collin Creek blocks M through Z and AA. 402 single family residence lots, 25 common, 25 common area lots and park playground on 100 acres located on the east side of Alma Drive, 760 feet south of 15th Street. Zoned Urban Mixed Use 3 and located within the 190 Tollway Plano Parkway Overlay District. Applicant is MMCCM 48M LLC. Administrative consideration. This item is recommended for approval subject to additions and or alterations to the engineering plans as required by the engineering department and approval by the city attorney and subsequent recordation at the county of the declaration of covenants conditions and restrictions. Happy to answer any questions. Easy for you to say. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Any questions for staff? All right, thank you. I'll open the public hearing. Do we have any speakers on this item? Uh, no, we do not. Thank you. I'll close the public hearing. Anyone brave enough to make a motion on this? <laughs> I have a comment first, okay. if that's all right. Yes, absolutely. Um, first of all, I've seen a lot of plats in my life. This is by, by, by far the most complicated one I believe I've ever seen. So kudos to the staff and the engineering firm that put that together. That was an impressive piece of work. Um, with that said, I would make a motion that we approve the uh, plat subject to the additions and alterations of the engineering plans as required by the engineering department and approval by the city attorney and subsequent recordation of the county by the Declaration of Covenants, Conditions, and Restrictions. Wow. So I would, uh, I would just like to make one comment. Uh, I'm very excited to uh, to see these single family uh, come in, come in, and um, uh, I want to second that because. Okay, thank you. Um, I was looking for the second, and then the discussion, but that's fine. You 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 made your second as a way of expressing support. So yes, we're good. So we have a motion by Commissioner Rather for the second by Commissioner Bronski to approve item four. Uh, please vote. That item carries seven zero. Item five. Agenda item number five, public hearing, preliminary replat. Preston Park Village Edition, Block A, Lot 1R. Shopping center on one lot on 26.3 acres, <coughs> located on the southeast corner of Preston Road and Park Boulevard. Zone plan development, 183. 189 Retail General Office with specific use permits number 150 for arcade, 229 for public, private club, and 649 for private club and located within the one the Preston Road Overlay District. Applicant is Bixmore Property Group. Administrative consideration. 
Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the Commission. I'm Raha Pulati, lead planner with the planning department. Um, staff recommends approval of the preliminary replat subject to additions and or alterations to the engineering plans as required by engineering department. And as for the revised site plan, staff recommends approval as submitted. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Questions, Commissioner Carey. Yeah, just uh, at a high level, what are the most significant improvements that this replat will deliver? Sure. Um, the, sig the most significant improvements that they are uh, making to the site is, sorry, it's to the parking lot in the middle of this page and to the um, northeast corner of this page. So essentially they are making um, some changes on the parking lot here and to that Katy Trail restaurant and the surrounding parking area to the northeast. Of yeah, that parking lot can use some improvement. <laughs> so, okay, thank you very much. Sure. Any other questions for staff? All right, thank you. Open the public hearing. Do we have any speakers on this item? No, we do not. Thank you. I will close the public hearing. Final discussion with the commission. I move we approve agenda item number four. Uh, five. Uh, agenda item number five, upon recommendations, approval is subject to additions and or alterations to the engineering plans as required by the engineering department. Also, we approve the uh, revised site plan as submitted. Second. Okay, I have a motion by Commissioner Horn with a second by Commissioner Bronski. Please vote. Bless you. Commissioner Bronski? I uh, probably did. That item carries 7 0. Thank you. Item 6. Non-public hearing items. The presiding officer will permit limited public comment for items on the agenda not posted for a public hearing. The presiding officer will establish time limits based upon the number of speaker requests, length of the agenda, and to ensure meeting efficiency, and may include a total time limit. Speakers will be called in the order cards are received until the total time is exhausted. Agenda item number six, final plat and site plan. Rishopt addition, block A, lot two, utility distribution transmission lines on one lot on 0.6 acre located at the northwest corner of K Avenue and Plano Parkway, zoned light commercial and located within the 190 tollway Plano Parkway overlay. Applicant is Atmos Energy Corporation. The purpose for the final plot is to establish lot and block boundaries and dedicate easements necessary for the utility distribution transmission line development. And the purpose for the site plan is to show the proposed fencing, driveway, sidewalks, parking, and equipment. The applicant is requesting two variances for, this, for their site. The first variance the commission can grant and the second one will be reviewed by the Board of Adjustment. The first variance is to provide one point of access rather than two. The applicant is proposing one point of access along J Place, outlined in red on the screen. The applicant um, could get a second point of access along Plano Parkway, K Avenue, or via the access easement highlighted in yellow at the top of the screen. There are findings as shown on the screen that the Planning and Zoning Commission has to make in order to grant the variance. Overall, due to the nature of the development on the property, the limited need for access at this time, and the fact that a second point of access could easily be accommodated with future redevelopment, city staff is supportive of the access variance requested. Of note, Plano Fire, Rescue, and Traffic Engineering staff have reviewed and requested, re have reviewed the request and are supportive of only allowing one point of access. The second variance is for a proposed eight-foot wood fence highlighted in blue on the screen. The zoning ordinance requires a 50-foot front yard setback highlighted in red on the screen. The zoning ordinance prohibits fences within the front yard setback unless they are less than 40 inches in height and at least 50% open. The applicant has submitted this site plan so that it can be acted upon prior to the hearing of the variances. 
The commission lacks the jurisdiction to approve or deny a variance for the height and type of the fence in the front yard setback. Approval of the site plan simply allows the applicant to move forward and submit the variance requests, which will then follow the normal process with the Board of Adjustment. If the Board of Adjustment does not approve the requested variance, the applicant will need to modify the fence to meet the city's requirements in Article 20 of the Zoning Ordinance. This item is recommended for approval subject to the um, stipulations shown on the screen, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay, kind of a complex thing there with multiple bodies and involved. Uh, Commissioner Carey, you raised yeah. your hand. Yeah, I, I just, I mean, it all makes sense. I'm just curious, they cite a specific hardship, and I, I'm just curious what that is. I think it's probably the nature of their business, and they're also on the phone to answer any questions. And Mr. Hill, if you want to provide any of the more Yeah, I think that, that's accurate since this is really a utility line. You know, the needs for access to the site are really limited to uh, the service providers um, that need to access and repair the property. And also, it's a security issue concern for them, so that's why they're requesting the variance, which is unique uh, since it's utility property again. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Stone. Yes, uh, does Atmos have uh, guidelines about the final appearance of the eight foot wood stockade fence? Do we know what they're allowed to do in terms of painting or colors or graphics, or do we know anything about that? Do they have requirements that they have to meet? There are no requirements in terms of color. I believe they're just proposing a standard wood fence. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Horn. Uh, I've seen the property and the, the fence there. I've seen better fences on in the neighborhood alleys. My concern about this being a gas uh, transmission area is the security aspect of it. An eight, to me, in my opinion, an eight foot uh, wooden fence does not provide enough or sufficient security. It does block view from passerbys and stuff, but they still have a sign out front that says it's at, at this property. And I think, you know, I think there's something to be said about beefing up the, that fence to add a little bit more security so ne'er do wells don't climb over it, to be honest with you. I don't know that that's something that it's, we have the ability to really kind of change, right? All we can do is say we're right. giving them the ability to uh, build a fence in an area where it's not typically allowed. And then I guess it'll be up to the uh, Board of Adjustment to grant a variance for that. And they may have questions around what would be built. But. That, that answered my question. That was going to be my question is do we, do, can we dictate that? Or is that just to what, whether they can build one here? Is that all we're approving tonight is location? Uh, I don't know. I, I think it's they're asking us for permission on the location and the, and the variance to allow them to build in that in that area. Okay. Uh, it is an administrative item. So again, I'm not sure we have a whole lot of leeway in our ability to dictate what they build. I just want to clarify the commission's question is really about access. Is are are two points of a lack access required? It's that subdivision ordinance, the fence location is purely a question for the Board of Adjustment. Um, okay. But uh, point of order, just we can voice a concern that this is recorded and the Board of Justice hears that concern. Is that correct? Uh, though we don't make a motion on it, we can voice that concern. We, we can provide that information, the video uh, <coughs> link to the Board of Adjustment as part of our information that we submit to them. Commissioner Riley. With that said, I'd like to voice a concern that um, I'm actually more concerned about a solid stockade fence than I would be about a metal fence you could see whether there was something behind it. I think it's a more secure if you can if it's got visible than if it's invisible. And so I would encourage them to do something that people couldn't hide behind. Hmm. Okay. Uh, as Ms. Day pointed out, our action really is is around the <coughs> two points of access. Uh, the fence is to the Board of Adjustment, as you as you had uh, indicated. So, as as she pointed out, 
I mean, they'll certainly have our recommendations on this. And it sounds like you're more interested in something more secure. Commissioner Rallop is saying at least make it so people can see what's happening behind that fence. Commissioner so I would actually like to make a comment about the access and tie together uh, Commissioner Horn's concern. Um, being the kind of business that they're involved in, um, one level of one way in and one way out seems like it could be a very dangerous situation if something actually happened on that property and we needed to get fire or rescue in there and needed to take care of something. I'm, I'm curious, as to, I didn't get a chance to see the information from the, the fire department, the fire rescue. Can you go into detail a little bit about their uh, comfort with this? Fire has approved the latest draft that is here at PNC today. So they are comfortable with the one point of access that's shown. Okay, well, I, you know, <clears throat> I, I struggle with that. I think it, uh, especially with it, the way that it's looking to be structured with the fencing, it, to me, it is a, a concern. Uh, I understand the security idea of uh, one way in and one way out, but um, yeah, I, I guess I'll just leave it at that. I, I think I, I have con concerns about the one way in and one way out access. It just seems to me that uh, it could pose a problem, uh, especially depending on how the fencing is uh, done and the fire department not even being sure what they're going into if there's something going on on the other side of the fence that they can't see when they're pulling in. Okay, very good. Commissioner Ali. I think the nature of the business is probably what makes it unique for, from a security perspective. It doesn't sound like there's going to be any uh, personnel working on this side. It's just a standalone utility, uh, which might address the fire concerns if, if there's nobody going to be rescued there and they just need one as access point. You know, that, that might be where fire has come from. Well, the problem is, is if people get in there and start causing problems, and there's only one way in and one way out, and we need to figure out how to rescue those people from being crazy, uh, it could pose a problem, in my opinion. Understood. Yeah. I think if you've been over to the site, uh, one, it's not that large. Um, they could probably uh, park a ladder truck two buildings over and, and easily access it from, from the standpoint of some kind of uh, issue with needing water or fire repression. Um, I think it was also mentioned there that there is a possibility for future access as part of the development, right? As part of uh, adjacent development, it mentioned that there might be uh, a second ad access added at a later date. So the question before us is, are we willing to grant the variance so that they can then go to Board of Adjustment? And I guess the discussion around the type of fence would probably take place there. Um, so thank you. Any more questions for staff? All right, thank you. Oh, well, I was just going to mention the applicant is on the line if you would like to ask them questions about that. Okay. Uh, well, this is not a public hearing item, so we don't have anyone else to speak on this? No, we do not. Okay, so let's, uh, it, it'd probably be good then, based on some of the questions I'm hearing, if the applicant is available, uh, let's bring him online and see if we can get some feedback. That clarification might help some of the concerns. Michelle, are you online? Oh. Can you hear me now? Yes. Can you hear us, Michelle? Yes, I can. And we're looking at. I'm not sure at... if my camera is working. Oh, here it is. There it is. Thank you. I'm Michelle. Um, I'm. I was the one that designed this site. Um. We do have a recommended a recommended second point of access. It's just that there has to be a gate there, and we're using a a public use access easement, which I guess doesn't count if it has a gate. Um, so that's why we're recommending the variance. We will have two points of access, but one of them doesn't count, I guess. Which is off K Avenue. Okay. We're going to ask. And then as, 
We're going to ask staff for a little bit of clarification on this because it sounds like, let me repeat what I think I heard you say. There are actually two points of access, but because you're adding a gate uh, and it's an easement, then it doesn't count as a point of access. That, that is my understanding. That's so correct. So in the yellow, okay. we do have a gate there. Okay, so then in essence, there are two points of access, but only one of them count because one of them is gated and is on a public easement rather than being a dedicated access point. Uh, just, just to clarify, the only pavement on the site, Michelle, correct me if I'm wrong, the paving is on the J place side. It's the one point of paved access that leads right. to the parking. The remainder of the site is crushed stone or unimproved surface, and that does connect again, with a gate to that offsite yellow access easement. So there's not a second point of paved access. Okay. And also that access point would be gated. All right. Thank but they you. have the ability to provide that if they so choose. Okay. Does that clarify for you some? Okay. So, yeah, I mean, so then it makes me wonder if this is something that's possibly in the future, why or why is it? not all being done at the same time, I guess, Michelle. Oh, it's being done at the same time. So what are we not understanding? So are you saying that there will be a second point of access now yes. or at, in a future, a paved point of access that, so what I understood was the yellow was something that could be in the future. Is that correct? Well, we were told that it wouldn't count, so we didn't add concrete to that location because usually at our sites, we won't have concrete because we want our pipeline to be able to be accessible, um, dug for mm. maintenance. So there will be, so normally there will be an access point. Have, I'm sorry, there will be an access point there at the yellow area, but it will have a gate. Yes, and it will not, right now it doesn't have paving to it. But it sounds like it makes sense to not have the paving in this particular area. Correct. Okay, yeah, that, that's much more clear than okay. what I heard before. I apologize. No worries. And if the- And then as for the fence, um, we were proposing a wooden fence just for aesthetic. Um, if, Plano would prefer a chain link fence with barbed wire at the top. Um, that's what we usually do at site, so I'm happy to <clears throat> propose that at the Board of adjust Adjustment based on the concerns here. Okay. Commissioner. Uh, well, Mr. I was Hill. just going to mention, uh, Michelle, there are specific restrictions on barbed wire. I think those are only appropriate in certain instances, certain zoning districts. Okay. This is not one of those. Right. Okay. Then uh, just a chain link fence, we can also propose it really. We're just trying to meet the city of Plano requirements. Um, so we're happy to talk about the type of fence. Okay. And I, come up with something yeah. that you all would like. I think that discussion will take place at the Board of Adjustment, and, and they may come back and say, no, they need a four-foot picket fence, and that's not our call. So <laughs> I think we've given the feedback we, we can give at this point. We need to circle back to we have an item before us that is to approve the variance. Is there any more questions about approving the variance for the two points of access? I'd like to make a motion that we... Uh approved subject to the Board of Adjustment granting variances to allow a solid fence within the front building setbacks as shown. I'll second. Okay, I have a motion by Commissioner Carey with a second by Commissioner Stone to approve the variances submitted. Please vote. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Agenda item number seven, review period extension request, revised site plan. Spring Creek Baptist Church, Block 1, Lot 1, review period extension request for a religious facility and commercial antenna support structure on one lot on point five, I'm sorry, on 5.0 acres located on the east side of Alma Drive, 400 and 
545 feet south of Spring Creek Parkway, zoned Single Family Residence Center, 7, Calvary Chapel of Dallas, Incorporated. Staff realized this morning that there was an error on the posted agenda for this item, and because of this, we are requesting that this project be tabled to the February 21st, 2022 Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions for staff on this item? Thank you. This is not a public hearing. Do we have any speakers on it, though? No, we do not. Great. Thank you. So I will move that we table this to our February 21st, 2022 meeting. Thank you. Second. So I have a motion by Commissioner Bronski with a second by Commissioner Ollie to table this to the February 21st meeting. Please vote. And that item carries seven to zero, oh, seven to zero. Okay. Item eight. Agenda item number eight: request to call a public hearing. Request to call a public hearing to amend Plan Development 129 General Office on 57.6 acres, amend Plan Development 137 General Office on 16.0 acres, and to rescind specific use permit number 609 for Hill Stop on 9.1 acres located at the northeast and southeast corners of Coit Road and 15th Street. Applicant is Medical City Plano. The applicant is requesting the commission to call public hearing for Plan Development 129 General Office, Plan De Development 137 General Office, and Specific Use Permit number 609 for Hellestop. The applicant has been unsuccessful in getting all property owner signatures within these plan development districts as detailed in their letter. The commission has been asked to initiate zoning requests in several instances where multiple ownerships are involved. The commission's approval allows the applicant to move forward and submit the zoning petition, which will then follow the normal schedule and process for zoning cases, but does not imply the commission's support or lack of support for the zoning change request. It is recommended that the Planning and Zoning Commission call a public hearing for this purpose. Happy to answer any questions. Any st questions for staff on this item? I have a question. If we do call a public hearing for this, would this fall under the new comprehensive plan as our guide? Okay. okay. Did you understood that it'll come in under the new comprehensive plan. Okay. Any other questions for staff? Thank you. Um, I see on the list there are two speakers on this or just registered opposition? They are speakers. Okay, they're speakers. So um, you're welcome to come speak. Understand that tonight we're not really talking the merits of the project or anything else, and that we'll call a public hearing at which point we do take all of the input. You're welcome to come speak if you want, uh, want to this evening. but. Again, we're not debating the merits of the project. We're just debating whether to call a public hearing for the project. This is Mr. Merrill. James Merrill. Okay. Appreciate the opportunity to, to address you tonight. My voice is a little off, but I have uh, had fluid on my lungs and I have some voice box damage too. So if you could bear with me. Uh, I'm part of this uh, plan development that City of Medical City Plano is proposing. We thought this, uh, I represent Don Elster and Don Elster is the adjoining property owner to the immediate east and to the north of this particular development. There's a four-story building there. It's in place that was approved by Don Elster's support several years ago. And this is the subject to a four-story addition with helicopter pads on the roof. Unfortunately, this was the original proposal that the city council was not likely to approve, nor was the planning department originally. It gave, Don Elster gave his support to it because it was to be a burn unit, level one trauma burn unit. So Don feels they're getting two bites at the apple here, and he's really concerned because uh, he gave uh, setback variances 
of 80 feet from his property line and his nearest residential building to the hospital is only 123 feet. Yet the building that they're <coughs> proposing now, I think is 140 feet tall or a little taller than that. And uh, as a result with a helicopter on top of it, uh, that's going to create a tremendous noise to the apartment complex. The city uh, medical center Plano uses Sikorsky helicopters. They're twin engine jet uh, helicopters. They have decibel readings up to 90 plus decibels, which is like a freight train almost, I believe. As a result, he feels that they should not have an opportunity to come back for a second bite at the apple since it was going to be turned down to begin with. This will be on a site plan as, uh, that he has as building three. I don't know if the city council has that exhibit or not. No, again, we don't have uh, a lot of information because this is so preliminary just to call a hearing. It, it's not an approval or a debate on the merits of the project or anything else. It's just, hey, we want to let everyone know we're talking about this and we want to give as many people as possible an opportunity to come and speak to it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is uh, Mr. Knight here? Okay. Good evening, Barry Knight, uh, 3521 Rankin Street, Dallas, Texas, representing Aspen Court Apartments. I understand uh, the purpose of the agenda item is to just call a public hearing. Correct. I have some questions. Uh, my first question is, is this going to be a separate plan development district for the hospital at this time, or are they going to continue to try to come in and get public hearings called every time they want to do a hospital expansion or change. Uh, a concern we have is that they're deleting the, uh, diluting the, pos the, the concerns of adjacent property owners because the area of request is so large and they're only just a portion of that area of request. They had the opportunity back in 2018 to do this and they chose not to do it. And now they're coming to you for assistance because they can't get other property owners to agree to the change. If they would have, in 2018, if they would have zoned their own property uh, the way they had proposed to change it, and with, again, uh, Don Elster's support, getting the four stories within 80 feet instead of the 130 feet that staff had recommended, they wouldn't have this problem. My second question is, is is it going to be separate public hearings but for the change to plan development uh, 129 and plan development 137? Uh, the reason I ask that question is plan development 137, I believe, includes a parking garage and a uh, proposed five-story building from the site plan we've, that we've been provided. I think that may be permitted. I talked to city staff today, and I think that may be permitted under the existing PD 137. I don't want any gamesmanship concerning that in order to increase the area of the proposed zoning in order to further dilute the opposition that this uh, residential property owners will have on this zoning case. Um, finally, uh, normally when you have a situation like this and a calling of a public hearing, there is some type of change condition that would be, uh, that would necessitate the calling of the public hearing. This case was fully heard back in 2018, and I'm hopeful that there's not gonna be every three or four years, the hospital coming over and over again, asking for the same thing over and over again. When they were, uh, they knew they couldn't get it in 2018, they asked my, for my client's support, got it, so that they could have a four-story building to buffer the helipads from the Aspen Court Apartments, and now they have the audacity to come in, ask for an eight-story building, four stories above the four stories that were approved back in 2018, and put the helipads on top of that building right next to the apartments. You might, you might get, start to get the feel for 
why my client is pretty upset about this and upset that the public hearing is even going to be called because we went all through all of this in 2018. If you have any questions about that, you can ask staff about it because I'm looking around and I see the same faces that I saw back in 2018. And I don't know how many of you on, were on the commission back then. But, Sir, uh, you've exceeded situation. your three minutes. Okay. Right. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Okay. Um, several pieces of information there, but I, I'm going to circle back to, I think our best step forward here is to call a public hearing so we can get more information and we can get answers to some of the questions that perhaps were asked. Is there any questions that anyone has at this point in time on the commission? I just have one uh, for staff. Uh, are we wanting to call one public hearing or are we looking for two public hearings? A single public hearing. Is the request. And to Mr. Knight's comments, the PD-129 has some very specific hospital-related regulations, so that's why um, when the applicant discussed with staff, it was to amend that PD rather than create a new one, because then we would have another hospital PD that would not cover the hospital at that point in time. So it was clearer to us to amend that. And I believe there are some changes to PD-137 as well as the specific use permit, but we would bring those together in one zoning case, one hearing before you. Any other questions, comments? We've had our speakers. We need, now it's up to us to take action. I move we approve agenda item number eight, call public meeting to gather all the information required to make intelligent decisions. Okay, second. I have a motion by Commissioner Horn with a second by Commissioner Ratliff to call a public hearing uh, on item number eight. So please vote. That item carries 7-0. Thank you for coming and speaking, sir. Item number nine. Agenda item number nine is discussion Entertainment van venue permits. This is a discussion to provide the commission with the background and purpose of entertainment venue permits and discuss the commission's role in the permit process. Good evening. I'm going to learn how to do this. Okay, gotcha. Okay, my name is Edgar Rexrode and I am the environmental quality manager for the environmental health and sustainability department. And tonight I'm going to be discussing with you or introducing to you our entertainment venue permit, which is new to our recently revised and, um, and approved ordinance for our noise ordinance. So today we'll just be going over um, a little bit of the background of the permit, um, how and why it came about. Uh, I'll discuss the fundamentals of sound and then um, provide an overview of commercial noise thresholds and then finally discuss the permit process for music venues and the commission's role in that process. So in 2020, our department um, and other city departments and council were all hearing from our entertainment venues saying that they felt that the current ordinance um, thresholds for noise were not allowing them to operate in a way that would make their business continue um, to be successful. So council asked us to research options that would allow the venues to extend operational hours at higher thresholds. It was their hope that they would balance both businesses and the residential um, community within that area, within those areas. So staff got together, um, planning, legal, and our department, and we considered um, first an affirmative defense, but we felt that that would not allow for the public input process, so that was dismissed. We considered entertainment districts that you often see, you see in places like Austin, um, but then that felt like we would have an equity issue because people who were not in that district, uh, venues would, you know, they were not being treated fairly um, because they wouldn't get the same opportunities. So we also considered SUPs, but legal felt that there were too many obstacles <coughs> there as well. We finally decided that an entertainment venue permit was the best option for us and for our citizens and businesses um, as we could consider each venue on a case-by-case -case basis. So in July of 2021, we produced or we showed this to council and they directed us to proceed with an entertainment venue permit option. 
We revised our ordinance with this permit, and that was recently approved in December of 13, with a delayed effective date of March 7th, 2022, one month from now. So to whom does this apply? An entertainment venue is an indoor or outdoor location where persons take part in entertainment, including but not limited to a concert hall, amphitheater, dance hall, auditorium, convention center, movie theater, bar, restaurant, or facility for performance of a play, film, exhibition, poetry reading, live music, recorded music, or dance. So if one were to receive a permit, they would be allowed to continue at the current daytime threshold in our ordinance for an additional two hours. So that would be allowed, instead of going to 10 p.m. for the daytime threshold, for these permit holders, they would go to 11.59 p.m. on Saturdays, on Fridays, Saturdays, and on New Year's Eve. So before we go into the thresholds of what we actually have during the daytime, I wanted to just show you a little bit about the decibel scale, um, just a little bit of the fundamentals of sound. Uh, as you can see here, it's a logarithmic scale uh, that goes in increments of 10. The um, increments, as they go up by three decibels, the um, sound intensifies about uh, doubles um, as far as what your perception of it is. And so uh, just to give you an idea of what decibels are, uh, the threshold of human hearing is at zero. Um, an example of 50 decibels would be a conversation at three feet apart, two people three feet apart. Uh, 60 decibels is a busy street and alarm clock. And a hairdryer and a noisy restaurant would be around 70 decibels. So that 60 and de 70 decibel range is what's important for you to remember about kind of and have an idea of what it sounds like. So our commercial thres thresholds during the daytime, uh, again, our daytime thresholds are if you do not have a permit, is from 7 to 10 p.m. Uh, nighttime is 10.01 to 6.59. So the daytime threshold is six, 70 decibels or 10 decibels above the background noise level, whichever is lower. And then that goes down to 60 decibels or five decibels above the background noise level, whichever is lower at nighttime. So our permit holders and our mixed use in our commercial districts would be allowed to go past that 10 p.m. and go all the way to 11.59 p.m. on Friday or Saturday and New Year's Eve. Can I ask a question before you move from that yes. slide? Is that noise measured inside the residence or outside the residence? So these, the noise measurement, if it is, um, so say for example, we get um, a complaint at any resident, we go to the property boundary where the noise is audible. So say, you know, so that might be inside or it might be outside? We only measure outside. Okay. We don't really want our, our specialists to go inside, inside. for um, security reasons. But if it's on a balcony and that's where we're getting our complaint and the complainant allows us to go on into their property, we will go in with a police officer and take the, the reading there. Okay. Um, but typically, we're just, we just want to take the measurement, the property line where it's audible. Thank you. Yes. Can I ask a question about this too before we Okay. Uh, go ahead. Oh, define background noise level. So, for example, I live in the downtown area. Is the background noise level with the train or without the train? It's without the train. <laughs> it's without the train. So, yeah, our, ba our background noise levels would be, you know, so if we got a, a, a complaint, then uh, we would make sure that the music thingy was not in operation. And we would go, so if our complaints are normally at 10 o'clock, we would go on a time with the music, say, on a Thursday or we, we'd really like to go on a Friday where you have more activity because it's that's it would be more of the background and um, and we would get the background then. We do it in intervals of 10 minutes and we take a couple of different uh, readings uh, during that time. But yes, it is without, you know, if we have someone going by with a leaf blower, then we won't measure at that time. Okay. Yes. No trains, okay. Yeah, a curiosity to me. So if you're gonna measure that uh, noise level, uh, in summer, when all the air conditioners are running, it seems significantly more noisy than when they're not. And so how does that particular thing weigh in? Because I, there are other things similar to that. Um, Correct. How, how does that uh, yes. roll up in there? Uh, we actually do have an affirmative defense in our ordinance for things like um, air conditioners and pool equipment and that sort of thing. So uh, if we were out and, and taking a background measurement, we would make sure that the air conditioning was not affecting our reading. Or you know, if it's just something where it's this is every day, the air conditioning unit's going off every few minutes, then we would just go ahead and take the reading. Yes, but there is an affirmative defense for air conditioning in our ordinance. Thank you. Yes. Any, any other questions surrounding this? Let's, okay. let's keep moving. Okay. 
So uh, the process, so the, the process uh, for the application is the applicant would submit to our department the application, um, and including in that is our sound impact plan and a study for, for noise at that location. The department, our department would review the application. We would send notifications to uh, properties within 500 feet of the property boundary of the entertainment venue and to all HOAs within 1500 feet of the property boundary. We would um, send out these notifications and they would receive them 14 days before the planning and zoning uh, commission hearing. We would then prepare a recommendation. We would either we would approve, approve the conditions or deny. We would then pass on and place on to your agenda for recommendation. And again, you would um, approve, approve the conditions or deny. That then gets sent to city council and they again approve, approve the conditions or um, deny. Of course, theirs is an actual decision. Ours are only recommendations. Once it goes down to city council and that is done, it's either approved or approved with conditions. It then goes to the permit, our HR department, and we issue the permit. Each permit is a three-year permit. However, if they go the permit the whole three-year term without any type of violation uh, with regards to noise, then we extend that to five years. Either way, if it's a three-year permit or a five-year permit and they are set for renewal, it's going to go back to, the, to your commission and then to city council for approval again. Of course, if it's denied, then it goes straight back up, back to the application process for that applicant. Is this, for our purposes, an administrative item? No, this would be a legislative item. Okay. <clears throat> In the same process, if we deny it, they have the opportunity to appeal it to council. Yes. You're just making a recommendation in this situation. So um, it, you're giving the recommendation to council. They make the final decision. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. So part of the application process is a sound impact plan. The sound impact plan is uh, to be prepared by a professional acoustical consultant or engineer. The noise impact, um, or it, oh, I'm sorry, it includes... Uh, results from the noise study, which are noise impact to surrounding properties as measured from the receiving property, prescribed decibel levels and hours of operation. And by prescribed decibel levels, we mean that we need to hear from them what decibel levels they can operate um, to where the sound, when it hits the receiving property, uh, they're within those thresholds of our, within the permit thresholds. Sound mitigating design features, availability and use of decibel meters on site, and contact information and hours of availability for an individual responsible for sound. So um, all decision-making bodies, be it, be it the department, the commission, or the council, have these four decision-making points to consider. Whether the permit will unreasonably interfere with the right of neighbors to peaceable enjoyment of their property, whether the permit permitted activity is suitable for the area where it will be located, if the mitigation measures appropriately consider the effect of the permit on the surrounding properties, and any other considerations related to health, safety, and welfare. And that is all I have today. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Ollie, you had a question. I saw your, turn your light on or your. The sound impact analysis, um, what's the baseline for a reasonable use? So the chart you showed, the heavy metal concert was like, you know, at the top of the decibel chart. It's, do you, I'm trying to figure out how that works. Do you, um, see the sound effect at the highest possible decibels or you know how, how does that work what how do you set that are you, do you mean for the sound impact plan right or what we're allowing so the decibel levels are not we're not actually increasing any of the decibel levels allowed in our ordinance we're only allowing the daytime levels to be extended a couple of hours right so that makes so if when you're doing that uh impact to the neighboring uh, properties um I will assume if somebody's playing a jazz concert, it's a little bit easier on the ears than a heavy metal concert. Like, what do you use to determine the impact? What's reasonable? Yeah. Um, well, so we felt that the noises, the decibel levels that we are, have already been approved in the ordinance are what we felt were reasonable. So whether it be a jazz concert or ACDC um, has no bearing on, on the decibel levels that we allow. Right. Is that okay. not answering your question? <laughs> there's no, there's no uh, differentiation. It's just noise, right? And whether it's, whether it's. Right. I guess maybe what, what I'm asking is if you're 500 feet from the 
you know, that's the, the neighborhood threshold. And I'm going to assume they're playing something in the venue for you to measure if um, their mitigating factors are acceptable to keep it within the decibel ratio. How high do you crank it in the, within the actual venue for you to get a good feel of what the neighbor 500 feet away is hearing? Right. So the decibel levels, I mean, what's being played really has no bearing on the decibel levels. So uh, the sound impact plan should be able, they, that's, that's what the prescribed levels that I spoke of with the sound impact plan. So when they're in their venue, they should know what decibels that they can be emitting so that when it reaches the receiving property, it's within that threshold that's okay. within the ordinance. So it's up to them to keep it? Yes, at, correct. At that, that's yes. Okay. Commissioner Bronski, you've been patient. Go ahead, go ahead. No, I had a couple of questions. Um, can you go back to the slide that uh, was the process or something you were talking about? Yes. Yeah, there we go. Um, question for Eric. Um, the weather radio notification piece, would that be usable for this? So that if somebody wanted to find out about what was going on with a particular so that's, it's specific for zoning cases right now. We've not explored expanding it to other types of uses or permits at this time. Okay. Um, and my only other question, uh, I kind of thinking on uh, Commissioner Ollie's question. Um, so music has different levels depending on the intensity of the song, right? I mean, uh, some songs start off soft, and how does how does that work? Whenever the the sound uh, is, I mean, if it's being measured when you show up, and it's at a time that it's a lull in the the performance, versus whenever it's um, you know at a much higher. In right. So as far as the enforcement side of it. Um, that's why we go. We take it an average of ten minutes. Uh, we do make sure that it is similar to um, what has been, you know, the complaint and what they're uh, what they've been hearing during that uh, long duration when they called us. Uh, so yeah, that's that's why we take an average and we don't. I mean, we do make sure that you know they're not on a break or that it, they don't start a break in the middle of our of our reading. Okay, Mr. Stone. So the 70 dB max for daytime and 60 dB max for nighttime, those numbers are not changing? Correct. At this, no. That's, that's that what correct. we've been doing all along? Yes. Good. Thank correct. you. Commissioner Ratliff. A couple of things. Um, I, I, given this is a new policy, is, that, is our existing venue is going to be grandfathered or will they all have to apply for a permit and go through this process? Right. There is no grandfathering. Um, we don't, in, we don't intend or expect to get very many of these applications, although we do know that there's a couple that have dis uh, discussed wanting them. Um, but no, we don't have any, anything currently even similar to this. And so this would be the first of its kind. Okay. So the other, my other concern is in the downtown district, there aren't very many HOAs because the neighborhoods are long before HOAs. And so is there a, can, can you, would you consider modifying the provision for areas that are not covered by HOAs to notify homeowners within 1500 feet? Because there's not an HOA in the historic district. So that, that means only people within 500 feet are gonna get notified. Okay, that might be a zoning question, but I feel it, the 500 feet of, um, the property owners within 500 feet will be notified. If there are no HOAs, um, right now we only have 1,500 feet covered for HOAs in our ordinance. So that, that part of this is, of the notification process is in the ordinance right now. I don't know if, uh, if zoning. This day. Our uh, notification system, it's for neighborhood associations and homeowners associations. So you don't have to be formally organized. You can be informally organized and still receive notice. So the city's neighborhood services department maintains a list of uh, uh, like old town neighborhood I know has a contact. We do. That's not a, um, that's not a formal HOA. homeowners association um, that's mandatory, but it is a uh, voluntary association, so okay, so they are still, covered. They still would be covered. Okay, great. That's good news. And then, um, what about 
public events. There's a, a lot of stuff that goes on downtown, Haggard Park, are those, because they're public events that the city puts on, are those permitted also and subject to the same restrictions? Yes, that would be separate of this, but we do have special event permits in the city that we okay. are covering, that cover that. Great, that's it, thank you. Commissioner thank you. Horn. And just for clarification one more time, we're looking at, I'm thinking about nighttime, considering where you live, and I've heard some of your complaints before, of another, <laughs> but uh, the, uh, what we're looking about really maximum five decibels above background noise really is, is kind of the limit here. But that's measured from the property line of that? Of uh, the receiving property, correct. The receiving and that's, property. that's for nighttime. And, and that's, that's for nighttime, yes, right. 10 decibels above during the day. Okay, so like you said, if there's a venue downtown and he's living over there on, uh, you know, on the further backside in the old town, it's going to be quite loud for him to get that level. Okay, great, thanks. What, um, we're, I think we're almost done here. In terms of um, just understanding better the way the process is gonna work, if somebody's in violation, so they, homeowner, somebody calls, says, hey, I, I can't hear myself think. Uh, you send someone out from staff. Now, if this is at 11 o'clock at night, is somebody from staff gonna go and take these readings? We are, working with police for PD, and so yes, PD would respond at that point. Okay, so police would go out, they have the equipment to take a decibel reading, they'll have the policy, you're gonna take six readings over 10 minutes or piece apart or whatever, whatever that is. If they're found to be in violation, you require them to have a contact information. Is it the police officer that's gonna call and tell them, hey, turn it down? Yes. Okay. Yes. Three weeks later, second violation and they're in violation. And I think I read that there's two violations and then your permit gets yanked, right? Correct. If it's yanked, can they simply apply two weeks later for a new permit or no, there's a period of time where they're not allowed to operate or are they done? I'm gonna call Rachel. Okay. <laughs> Rachel Patterson, who's our Director of Environmental Health and Sustainability. <laughs> I guess trying to understand how many teeth are in this thing when it comes to saying, you keep violating the rules, we're gonna make you feel it. Yeah, um, I believe that if they violate the rules, they have to wait, is it 12 months? I think that's what we had, 24 months before okay. they can apply again. Okay. If that's... their permit is if their permit is revoked. Yeah. But I mean, we will work with them. We, when we respond, you know, say, hey, you know, we gotta, we gotta turn this down. Um, if they don't respond to that, then we go through the notice of violation process. They have chances to comply. Okay. So it would have to be a pretty egregious um, violation, a consistent violation right. of the ordinance before we would revoke a permit. But, um, but we also need to consider the needs of the residents. So Absolutely. Yeah. That, that's the concern. And it, you may think, okay, background noise, and you said a hair driver alarm or an alarm clock. I don't know about you guys, my alarm clock annoys the heck out of me in the morning. <laughs> and if I had an alarm clock going off right next to me, you know, at 11 o'clock at night and I couldn't turn it off, that would be very frustrating. So um, anyway, all right, thank you very much. Uh, Commissioner Good question. I think this is more legal more than anything. Um, the revoking of the permit and the 24 month oh. moratorium, would it be on the business entity or the individual? Like, do I re reorganize as a different LLC and apply for the permit? We did try to consider that. I believe we wrote it so that it was tied to the principles, the, the people who, um, you know, are underlying that LLC. So in other words, they couldn't, as you said, reorganize, and now it's a new person applying for the permit. So, okay. Any other questions? And I don't believe there's any action on this. This was more of an educational, uh, because it's going to be coming to us for action as a recommendation to council. We just wanted to kind of walk through it. Okay, any other questions on this issue? Can Thank I just add oh, one yes. Sorry, it is 12 months, not 24 months. It's 12 months, 12 not months. 24. Okay. Sorry, we apologize. Still, if you make your money doing that, uh, that's yeah. it's still a long time. No. So I do. Now I have a question. <laughs> Not necessarily. We were about almost that. done. We were Dang almost. Done. So well, my question is for Michelle. Um, so 
would there be a way to not only tie it to the principles, but tie it to the property itself? So that, uh, for example, um, David and I are in business doing, uh, making noise, and then we turn it over to our wives operating the same property under different ownership. She may be looking it up. My only concern with that is if it's legitimately sold property, the new owners may be more than able and willing to comply. Well, I'm saying maybe. Yeah, I understand where you're going with that. I think she can try to look that up. But I, I'm just curious. Yeah, yeah I, it's going to take me. It'll take a while. We'll, no, we'll get you the. the yeah, answer. that's fine. I, okay. Um, that's all. Anything else? Anything else you would like to share with us? Thank you for your patience being here all evening. We appreciate that. Uh, item 10 on our agenda was our picture, which we're not going to uh, take this evening because we're missing Commissioner Tong. Uh, oh, she oh, asked me to pass okay. that along. Okay. okay. Anything else? Does that, does that answer the question that he asked? Yeah, thank you. So there's language in the ordinance that says no permit will be issued to a person who owned or who has had an ownership interest in an entity that had its entertainment venue permit revoked under this chapter in the preceding 12 months. So, um, you know, if they owned it jointly, it's going to work. And now, I, I suppose... Um, I would think you could make a case under... The, the Under, wife, the they, wife. They might be able to pass it or, or to a family member. Um, you know, so they're, they, they, I mean, they'd have to do considerable work to make that to, happen. To draw that barrier. But, but they could. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's why I said it. It yeah. makes it to be able to, I know, like special use permits for tools. Yeah. Um, it's tied not only to the entity, but to the property as well. Uh, <laughs> that's where I asked. Okay. Anything else? All right. We're adjourned at 8.12. Thank you, everybody. Chair down. Sorry. Commissioner Ollie. Picture with all of you, if that was okay. He knew there Commissioner was a picture. Ollie? Commissioner, Commissioner Ollie's, Ollie's son. son would like to take a picture with, with the commission. With us. Does he yes. want to come?